In this video, we'll discuss sorting algorithms, particularly quadratic time comparison sorting algorithms. First, let's consider some applications of sorting. So one direct application is applying binary search. If we have a sorted array or vector, we can apply binary search to find an element in the vector or array in log of n time, where n are the number of elements in the array or vector. Now let's consider finding the intersection. So suppose we have two sets of integers that are in arrays or vectors, and we're going to let m be the size of a and n be the size of b. So now let's see how, what we have to do if they're unsorted, and we want to find the elements in common to both the intersection. So I can look at the element 7, the first element of A, and in order to tell whether it's in B in, or not, I just have to do a linear scan. I just have to search through the entire array of elements in B and see if I find a 7. I would, so I put it in the intersection, and I would do the same for 3. I see the second element of A is 3, so then I search through B, and I find a 3, and then when I'm looking for 8, I can search all of B for 8. I'd find it and put it in the intersection. And then when I get to 6, I would search B for 6, and I'd see, oh, well, it's not there, so it's not in the intersection. So you can see we have to do a linear scan of B for every element in A. So that gives us a runtime when they are unsorted. The runtime of finding the intersection is M times N. For each element in A, we have to do a linear scan of B. Now let's consider this problem if they're sorted. So if they're sorted, we can actually just do a linear scan of both arrays or vectors at the same time. So I can have my index i pointing to the start of the elements in A and my index j pointing to the start of the elements in B. And I can just keep track of where I am scanning each list at the same time. So I can compare the first elements of each. If they're equal, I can just put them in, as in the intersection. Otherwise, if the first element in A is less than the first element in B, then you'll see I have to move the pointer i over in A, and then I have to compare them. So I'm moving the index over to keep track of the current element in A, and then I compare the current element in A with the current element B. So I would compare 2 and 3. I see that 2 is less than 3, so then I increment the current pointer in J, so I increment J, and then I'd see, okay, both of them, both I and J are pointing to 3 in their arrays, so I could have that they're equal, so I'd put 3 in the intersection of both A and B, and then I would advance both of the ind indices into the arrays and move forward like that. So this might be a good practice exercise for you to consider, but you can see that we can do this as a linear scan. We're scanning both arrays or vectors at the same time, so now the runtime is O of M plus N, so that's just a linear scan of both of them at the same time, just going through all of them. Okay. Another concept that we're going to be concerned about for sorting is stability. So we say that a sort is stable if the order of equal elements in the original list is maintained in the sorting list. So as you can see in the right, we have integers with the letter next to them. But the key takeaway here is we have 7a, 3b, 5e, 8c, and 5d. And you'll notice that we have two fives, the 5e in red and the 5d in blue. When it's stable, you'll notice that we have all of the numbers sorted by increasing order, or actually this is non-decreasing order, but you'll notice the two equal fives, that the red five is before the blue five, as it was in the original, whereas an unstable sorting algorithm would have the blue five before the red five in the sorted list, and that is not the same order that they had in the original list. So we'd say that this would be an, the result of an unstable sorting algorithm. So one application where we use this concept of stable sorting is, for example, when we work with spreadsheets such as Google 
sheets or Excel spreadsheets. And so, for example, if we had a list of students and say their scores. So suppose I had my students A, B, C, and D, and they had scores on the exam. So A got 100, B got a 90, C got an 80, and D got a 90. Now, the stable sorting would look like this. So what we want to do with stable sorting is we want to sort the scores from in non-decreasing order, but we want to maintain the alphabetical order at the same time. So let me show you what a stable sort would look like. So we'd have our students, and we'd have our scores, and we have C with the score of 80. It's the smallest. But now we have to consider both B and D. They both got 90s, but we want to maintain the alphabetical order of the names. So we'd have B at 90, D at 90, and finally we'd have A with the highest score of 100. Now I want to show you if this was not stable, and I want to show you not stable, in a non-stable sorting, this would have D 90 before B 90. So they're both in the correct order in terms of the numbers, but we've violated the order, the alphabetical ordering that we had in the original list, so this would be unstable. Okay, now let's